Hey guys, Jordan with the Young Turks. Hope everyone's day is going well. Uh, I have been buried with WikiLeaks. Uh, just when you think you'll get a little break and you could actually dig through uh, more of the leaks, uh, they, they release another part. <laughs> so uh, yesterday was part three. Today is part four. And only a few hours after releasing part four, uh, they, are, they have released part five. So Emma and I have been uh, busy as a bee uh, going through the leaks and try I've been tweeting up a storm to give you all the information you need for the leaks. Uh, I will be going through uh, a lot of the leaks in this report. Uh, I'll be looking down to uh, read off my computer. So I'm going to try to look into the camera as much as possible, but uh, some of it I will be looking down. So uh, you should know that. Uh, for those of you unfamiliar, WikiLeaks started releasing uh, emails they hacked from John Podesta. John Podesta is the uh, chairman of Hillary Clinton's campaign. He used to be uh, a staffer for a high-level uh, advisor to President Obama. Uh, he worked in the Clinton uh, White House for Bill Clinton. So he's a lifelong uh, Clinton ally. And uh, his email was hacked dating back years. So there's emails with all the people, uh, the higher-ups in the Clinton campaign, and WikiLeaks started releasing his emails in, on Friday. So they've released five parts so far, and we're talking thousands of emails at this point. So uh, I'll be reading to you the emails that I find to be the most um, noteworthy. Again, I'll be looking down for some of this, so my apologies. But um, first one I found interesting that I saw this morning uh, was an email from a Florida Democratic operative. So this was... Uh, the former Democratic chairman of the Palm Beach County Democrats, so Florida. Um, so he writes an email to uh, the campaign saying, so here's my idea. Bernie and his people have been bitching about superdelegates and the huge percentage that have come out for Hillary. Since the original idea was to bring our elected officials to the convention ex officio, why not throw Bernie a bone and reduce the superdelegates in the future to the original draft of members of the House and Senate, governors and big city mayors, eliminating the DNC members who are not state chairs or vice chairs? Parentheses. Frankly, DNC members don't really represent constituencies anyway. I should know. I served on the DNC first as executive director and then as an elected member for 10 years. So if we give, they put... Uh, quotes around give, if we give Bernie this in the convention's rules committee, his people will think they're, they've won, one is in air quotes, uh, something from the party establishment. And it functionally doesn't make any difference anyway. They win, we don't lose, everyone is happy. So essentially this guy is telling uh, Hillary's campaign, this is how you get Bernie's campaign to quote, stop bitching while they were in negotiations for the Democratic platform. Uh, he then goes into, why don't you knock off some of the superdelegate numbers, and then you could give them a figurative uh, win. I find it funny that he's saying DNC members don't actually represent any constituencies. So at least he's admitting it, that the DNC doesn't really care about the people they're supposed to be representing. So I thought that was very interesting. Uh, moving onward, and if you want to read through uh, all of my tweets, I've been tweeting out a storm. My Twitter is at J-O-R-D-A-N. C-H-A-R-I-T-O-N. So, onward we go. Um, Hillary Clinton's campaign uh, talking about muddying the waters uh, versus Bernie, Bernie Sanders on Wall Street. So this was, a, this was an email sent from Jennifer Palmieri, who is the communications director for Hillary Clinton. Quote, I liked messing with Bernie on Wall Street at a staff level for the purpose of muddying the waters and throwing them off their game a bit but don't know that it is the most effective contrast for her. <laughs> Seems like we are picking the fight he wants to have. If we really want to do this, think your formulation is good, but not convinced it is a good idea. I would also try to get less process and more values slash outcomes in the sentence about being able to do all parts of the job. Give people a sense of her doing the whole job as POTUS is, and how it's going to improve their lives. So basically, this email is saying, let's not fight Bernie on Wall Street. That's not a fight we want to have since our candidate is essentially the candidate of Wall Street and a corporate shill. So at least they are acknowledging the truth uh, in these emails. 
And for those of you uh, writing bad things about Jenk, Jenk's not telling me not to report on this. So, you know, lay off the man. He's, he's playing sick. He's been sick like me all week. And he hasn't said a word to me about not covering Hillary Clinton. So I think you all need to calm down. All right. Uh, another one which I, I found uh, very interesting. Let me find it here. Um, a consultant sent Hillary Clinton's campaign an email about the best way to, quote, uh, limit the number of debates. So, you know, the whole the, there was a whole thing about there's only six debates. The DNC and Debbie Wasserman Schultz was essentially putting them on Sunday nights and, you know, Sunday nights and uh, weekends and times nobody would watch. Uh, Hillary's campaign said, no, we're, we're for all the debates. Um, but um, obviously these debates were pretty much at times you couldn't watch them. I remember the first debate I covered literally was on a Saturday night the week before Christmas. Plenty of people watching on a Saturday night the week before Christmas. So this consultant wrote to them, um, the schedule as of today consists of 12 separate debate. Oh, he's talking about the Republican. The RNC early in the cycle announced a formal schedule of debates for their primary candidates. The schedule as of today consists of 12 separate debates beginning in August 2015. The RNC debates are logistically spread around the country with more than one debate in any with no more than one debate in any state. So for for through internal discussions we concluded that it was in our interest this is the Hillary, this is the Hillary Clinton campaign I assume to number 1 limit the number of debates and the number in each state, start the debates as late as possible. Uh, I, I interpret that as, as late in the primary calendar as possible. Keep debates out of the busy, busy window between February 1st and February 27th. You know, Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina. Let's not have debates there because we don't want our candidate to be in front of the American people when the, the first three states are voting. Seems like they're confident about her, huh? Uh, Four, create a schedule that would allow the later debates to be canceled if the race is for practical purposes over. Five, encourage an emphasis on local issues and local mar- media participants. Six, ensure a format that provides equal time for all candidates. Uh, the One that I found very interesting. Uh, at the end, they say, through discussion of these goals with the DNC, their current plan is to begin a debate schedule that would commence in early October with one debate a month one each in the early primary and caucus dates, and the remaining two post-South Carolina. Uh, They go on to talk about how they uh, want to try very as hard as they can to make sure each debate has more than one candidate because they don't want one-on-one debates with Hillary and somebody else. Obviously, uh, right after the Iowa caucus, it was just Bernie and Hillary because Martin O'Malley dropped out. But they were trying to get debates, limit the number of debates, Make sure they're not in the crucial time period between Iowa and South Carolina and make, make the criteria so that anybody could really debate. So it wasn't just Hillary Clinton versus Bernie Sanders. Uh, so that tells you how confident they were of their candidate. Moving on. Consultants. We got, let me find uh, the goodies. Oh, I also tweeted, as I look through these emails... I'm, uh, it's, I'm laughing because remember when Hillary Clinton's campaign accused Bernie Sanders' campaign of being the most negative campaign in the history of politics? And uh, then you look through these emails and it's like a bad episode of Mean Girls, the movie, uh, how the Clinton campaign carries on. So uh, I want to go through... Uh, oh, so we have uh, The Hill, which is a Washington website. It's kind of like Politico. Um, the Hill columnist, his name is Brent... Uh, Badowski. So he is, his email pops up a lot in these leaks. So Brent Badowski, uh, who's a columnist for thehill.com, writes John Podesta an email. John Podesta is the chairperson of Hillary Clinton's campaign. John Podesta's emails are the ones that were hacked. He writes, Brent writes to John, by the way, I may be doing an Elizabeth Warren column soon. If I write that my optimum scenario would be for Elizabeth Warren to ultimately give a big endorsement to Hillary Clinton and give the keynote speech at the convention, totally off the record, would that give, would that give you a problem, John? It would be my personal opinion only, but if you have a problem with my suggesting this as my idea, I won't tell anyone and I won't include it, deferring to you. This is a columnist for TheHill.com asking the chairman of the Hillary Clinton campaign 
if it's okay with him that he write that he thinks Elizabeth Warren should give a big endorsement to Hillary Clinton and then give a keynote speech. So basically, this writer slash journalist, I guess, is essentially allowing the Hillary Clinton's campaign to be its, his puppet master. Uh, he is basically serving up what he wants to write about and asking for approval from Hillary Clinton's campaign. Like, you, can't, you really can't make this up. So this shows you how in bed most of the mainstream media is with the Clinton campaign. And this is from May of 2015. So this is dating back last year, fairly early, you know, before any votes were cast or anything like that. So you have writers asking for permission uh, for the Clinton campaign so they could, if they could write something. So pretty, pretty startling, if you ask me. Moving onward, we go. Um, Demo- uh, bah, 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 bah. Keep going. Oh, so yeah, a Democrat, Philip, Ra- Philip Raines is a longtime aide to Hillary Clinton. He actually played Donald Trump in their mock debates before the first debate. So he sent an email uh, to the campaign uh, about uh, the, the emails and releasing the 55,000 emails that Hillary Clinton was supposed to release. Um, so, quote, not as flippantly and maybe just from Nick's mouth, but rather than going around and around on how to release the 55,000 emails, let's just, let's just be for what's happening and use this as the excuse. Because we could say even if state has uh, equities, not providing them would put her in legal jeopardy. Or we say happy for them to have it, happy for the public to read them as soon as state is comfortable. But let's somehow take advantage of this. So basically, Philip Raines is pretty much plotting what excuses to make uh, for Hillary Clinton, either to delay releasing the emails. Yeah, to delay releasing the emails. This is, by the way, after she was subpoenaed for them. So you could see in writing that Hillary Clinton's campaign is actively trying to plot how she could delay or make excuses for releasing the emails. And that's from Philip Raines, who is a longtime aide to Hillary Clinton. So here's, here's another good one. Uh, Hillary Clinton's campaign at- apparently wanted to attack Bernie Sanders for doing what they say he wasn't doing. They criticized him. He doesn't raise any money for the Democrats. You know, he's not a Democrat. So you have an email um, from uh, somebody at uh, Bill Clinton's, uh, I guess, Bill Clinton's uh, charity or the Clinton Foundation, writing, Bernie is at the DSCC retreat. So that would be the Dem- Democratic Senate Campaign Committee. Uh, meaning Bernie is at the retreat and he's helping the Democrats uh, in the Senate fundraise. So Brian Fallon, who's Hillary Clinton's uh, uh, spokesperson or press secretary, responds OMG to Bernie being at the Democratic uh, Senate campaign committee meeting. John Podesta, who is the chairman for the whole campaign, writes, can we tweet? Can we tweet that? So they're essentially, I guess, wanting to attack Bernie for fundraising for the Democrats. I guess they were trying to suggest that he's a hypocrite because he's out, you know, kowtowing to donors and, uh, you know, trying to make it seem like he's not authentic when he criticizes Hillary Clinton. It's pretty stupid, actually. Here we go. Uh, A really, really funny one, and I strongly suggest you look this up on YouTube. Um, Apparently, Hillary Clinton's people literally wrote her a script, a entire script that she could read from when she did an interview with MSNBC's Chris Hayes. So Chris Hayes, uh, on at 8 o'clock on MSNBC, did an interview with Hillary Clinton over the phone. So Hillary Clinton just called in to the interview. There's literally an email where Hillary Clinton is reading words from a script that her campaign wrote for her uh, in answering Chris Hayes. You can't make it up. Google or YouTube, Hillary Clinton, Chris Hayes interview. It'll come up. The video's like a minute and a half long. It shows uh, the script that was written for her, and she's literally reading from a script to do a phone interview. This is how scripted this candidate is. It's, it's mind-boggling. There's really no evidence that Chris Hayes actually like fed the campaign the questions beforehand, so I'm not attacking Chris Hayes, but this just shows, I mean, literally her campaign has to write out scripted uh, paragraphs for her to answer to do a phone interview with MSNBC. Does this sound like an authentic candidate to you? You be the judge. So definitely YouTube or Google, YouTube or Google Chris Hayes, uh, Hillary Clinton interview. So 
Let's get some more. Hillary Clinton. Oh, yeah. So uh, Ken Vogel from Politico reported this one. Uh, his tweet said Hillary Clinton was open to using a PAC as a platform, a super PAC, as a, pa- a platform to launch her 2016 campaign. A technique campaign finance reformers say violates the spirit of the law. So let me read you the email. This is from uh, Robbie Mook. He is Hillary Clinton's campaign manager. He writes, would appreciate thoughts on this. He's writing to the other campaign officials. I would appreciate your thoughts on this. I was frankly surprised yesterday by her opponents, by her openness to starting a PAC, etc. For that reason, my recommendation here is to open an, open an exploratory committee. It has advantages over a PAC, and I think they're the same in the eyes of the media. I assume for all scenarios that nothing happens before the midterm elections are over. Feedback welcome. So this was written in April 1st, 2014. Hillary Clinton was still deciding whether she should run for president, which obviously is bullshit. Uh, So they're saying Hillary Clinton is open to basically uh, using a super PAC as her unofficial platform to launch her campaign, to raising money, all those things. So this definitely shows a candidate who finds it important to overturn Citizens United and get money out of politics, for sure. Moving onward. And by the way, guys, if you're interested, I just wrote a piece. Uh, you could find it on Mediate.com. So that is M-E-D-I-A-I-T-E.com. I write, col- I write pieces for them from time to time. The headline is Hillary Clinton and corporate media shamefully stronger together. So kind of a pun on her campaign uh, slogan. And I basically just go example, 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 example of the media being in the tank for Hillary Clinton, as shown in these emails, and the media not covering any of the WikiLeaks. I mean, they're covering Trump 24-7 because they don't, they're indicted in these emails. A lot, of, a lot of journalists are in these emails, and it shows clear favoritism from those journalists for Hillary Clinton. So if you want to write that, the headline, Hillary, if you want to read that, excuse me, Hillary Clinton and corporate media shamefully stronger together. You could also find the link on my Facebook page, just Jordan Chariton, Uh, J-O-R-D-I-N, last name C-H-A-R-I-T-O-N. So that's a a little shameless plug for myself. Uh, Back to the emails. Let me find the next one. And, uh, oh yeah, so this one was good. Uh, Uma Abedin, uh, who is Hillary Clinton's right-hand woman, uh, currently still married to Anthony Weiner, but they'll be getting a divorce because of Weiner's escapades, but has been with Hillary Clinton for years. Uh, she basically wrote an email saying, I don't think we could survive not talking to the press all summer. As you know, Hillary Clinton pretty much avoided the press for an entire summer. She didn't have a press conference, I think, for most of the year. Um, and Uma Abedin basically said in this email, I don't, how are we supposed to survive? Uh, ke- Can we survive not answering questions from the press? Uh, She went on her her speech. Hold on. Uh, The email got a little distorted. Basically, the she's saying in this email, uh, you know, she's giving these great policy speeches. But since we're not talking to the press, it's being overshadowed. Uh, So John Podesta, who is the campaign manager, said it would be suicidal not to talk to the press uh, going forward. Let me find you the quote. Um, in, uh, in, in contrast, Abedin wrote, the Democratic presidential nominee's desired narrative got lost when she took questions after other speeches. So they're saying when she actually takes questions, it's not good for her because they don't want, they're not going to ask about your policy speeches. They're going to ask about the emails and other things. Uh, in the fall, starting to do avails at message events, interviews, and Q&A with press, but having had a series of policy proposals already announced and reported on uh, that she could point to. Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta disagreed. If she thinks we could go to Labor Day without taking press questions, I think that's suicidal. He wrote back, we have to find some mechanism to let the stream, let the stream out of the pressure cooker. So essentially, the campaign is trying to shield her from the media because she know, they know if they give her to the media, bad things are going to happen. She's got a lot of bad things she was trying to hide, including most of the things in these emails. So it just shows you that her campaign was very, very protective of her because they know she's got quite a bit of uh, bodies, bodies in the closet uh, trying to hide. Uh, another one, 
uh, that I found pretty funny. If you're familiar with uh, Neera Tandon, she is uh, the president of the Center for American Progress. They claim to be progressive. I don't think they're progressive. Uh, she's against $15 minimum wage and other things. But it's a think tank that claims to be a progressive think tank. Uh, Neera Tandon is all over these emails. You could find, uh, I've already found 10 emails. And she's basically a tool for the Hillary Clinton campaign. But uh, the New York Times, I guess, wrote a nasty story about Hillary Clinton. So uh, Neera Tandon writes to the campaign, uh, fuck these assholes about the New York Times. <laughs> so that tells you she's the president of the Center for American Progress, which is supposed to be an unbiased think tank. Very, very unbiased. I'm going to speed it up here. Um, there was one where Bill de Blasio, the mayor of New York City, uh, emailed to Hillary Clinton's campaign saying Hillary was fant about her performance at a debate. Hillary was fantastic on the gun control answer, then totally blew the mass incarceration question. Why on earth did she say, are you going to ask Bernie Sanders that question instead of just addressing the issue? When she makes it about her, she loses the high ground. Stating the obvious, I know, but she keeps doing it. So when she makes it about her, she loses the moral high ground. Uh, so that's from Bill de Blasio. Let's move on. Oh, so Hillary Clint a Hillary Clinton advisor uh, calls Bernie Sanders' plan for Wall Street dumb. Uh, so it's in an email exchange, essentially about uh, they're debating whether to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bernie Sanders on Wall Street. And uh, Jake Sullivan, who's an advisor to Hillary Clinton, writes, Why is it not credible that he has, a really, that he has really dumb plans for Wall Street? Yeah, so I guess holding banks accountable for mass fraud, you know, stealing trillions of dollars from average people, that's just a dumb plan. So uh, that's one of, one of her advisors said that. Uh, moving onward, we go. Um, Hillary Clinton's campaign was very upset at the AFL-CIO president. His name's Richard Trumpka, because AFL-CIO president went uh, on, I guess, Meet the Press and said that Vice President Joe Biden, when that was still kind of in flux, whether Biden would be running for president, uh, that he has fought for working people um, all his life. Hillary, Clinton, Hillary Clinton's campaign wrote, that implies Hillary Clinton has not. So you could see how trivial and how petty they are and how, like what political monsters they really are. Just about the most simplistic things, like the president of the AFL-CIO going on Meet the Press and praising Vice President Biden. That implies Hillary Clinton has not fight, been fighting for uh, WikiLeaks. Uh, excuse me, that Hillary Clinton has been fighting for working people all her life. I mean, she hasn't. That's just the truth. Um, moving on. Oh, I found this one very interesting. Uh, Politico found this one, so I've got to give credit. Um, their talk, John Podesta sends an email and they're talking about Hillary Clinton's where she stands on privacy versus thing, you know, privacy and the Edward Snowden camp versus empowering law enforcement. Podesta writes, her instincts are to buy some of the law enforcement arguments on crypto. I guess that means encryption and Snowden type issues. So maybe tough, but worth looking for an opening. So basically her instincts are law enforcement is great. Let's move away from the Edward Snowden, you know, uh, privacy and exposing, you know, government basically prying into our lives, obscure, you know, obtaining our data, obtaining personal conversations. So and, you know, it makes sense since Hillary Clinton was totally on board with everything George W. Bush did with the Patriot Act and all that business. So moving onward, we have oh, Bernie Sanders also provided a statement to me uh, in response to the latest leaks. Uh, I think he gave me the statement first, so I'll just read that to you. He said, the job of the progressive movement now is to look forward, not backwards. No matter what Hillary Clinton, no matter what Secretary Clinton may have said years ago behind closed doors, what's important today is that millions of people stand up and demand that the Democratic Party implement the most progressive platform in the history of our country. Secretary Clinton and I work together to develop a platform that demands the United States government stand up to the billionaire class and represents the interest of working families. This ha that has to go, that has to be the agenda for Secretary Clinton if she is elected president and the Democrats uh, and, and of Democrats in Congress. That platform calls for breaking up big banks, making the wealthy and profitable corporations pay their fair share of taxes, creating millions of jobs, rebuilding our crumbling infrastructure, raising the, raising the starvation minimum wage of $7.25 to an hour 
an hour to a living wage, making public colleges and universities tuition free. He goes on on and on and on uh, reciting, you know, what he wants. Uh, So basically, he doesn't attack Hillary Clinton. He says, go, you know, let's move on. Let's not move backwards. Uh, That statement is on my Twitter as well as my Facebook page. If you want to read it in full, I'll give you a few more. Um, Let's see here. Oh, yeah. So Hillary Clinton's campaign was plotting in in emails uh, how to spin the fact that Bernie Sanders was doing so much better than her in polls when going head to head for Donald Trump. As as the Young Turks reported, as I reported, Bernie Sanders was crushing Trump uh, in the primaries. But Hillary Clinton's campaign kept pushing. She's the better candidate. So here here was um, in writing what they were saying. This is how they're going to spin it. Quote, she's vetted. He is not. So the polls mean nothing, meaning she's vetted by, you know, the media and she's been in politics for 30 years. He apparently hasn't been vetted, even though he's been in politics just as long as her. Uh, quote, the person the, the Republicans and Trump are worried about running against is her, not him. That's why they're running ads against her. That's why they're running ads to help him. That's why the RNC has released press statements and even tweets admitting that they are behind Sanders because the person they don't want to run against is Hillary. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Another one, relying on polls to show you are worthy of being president it was, is what Trump himself does. So just absurd spinning to try to basically make people not believe the numbers. Bernie Sanders was beating Trump head to head somewhere between 10 and 15 points at some times, whereas Hillary Clinton this whole time was only up maybe four or five points. Meanwhile, they ran with Hillary Clinton. So that tells you that. I'll do one or two more for you. Um, uh, uh, this one I found funny. It doesn't have anything to do with Hillary Clinton. This goes back to 2011. But in an email, um, Sheikh, Sheikh Mohammed, who is the ruler of Dubai, Dubai, says he wants to speak with Bill Clinton. Uh, somebody from Bill Clinton's campaign, uh, excuse me, someone from the Clinton Foundation writes, unless Sheikh Mo has sent us a $6 million check, this sounds crazy to do. You write the check, Sheikh Mohammed, or I'm not talking to you. So that's Clinton. That's the Clinton Foundation. That's the Clinton way. Let's see. Oh, so uh, Hillary Clinton, she had to do an interview on her emails when the email scandal got too hot. Uh, her campaign apparently thought, who should we go to first for an interview? Who's the friendliest journalist we could find? Their, their options... Number one, Monday interview with MSNBC's Andrea Mitchell. Number two, Sunday interview with, Andrea, with MSNBC's Andrea Mitchell. So as you can see, the tough reporters and anchors at MSNBC are Hillary Clinton's go-to when she needed to do an interview. And Andrea Mitchell and her did a very, very uh, cuddly interview uh, at the end of August of last year. So that's, uh, that's most of the emails that I have gone through today. There's no, like, bombshell going to take her down, but it's just a lot of, a lot of emails that show her campaign was essentially, she's like the clay candidate. I did a video at TYT politics. If you're not subscribed, youtube.com slash TYT politics. She is a clay candidate. You could, you could mold her in different ways. Uh, they basically change her views, adopt policy positions, uh, as, as they go in order to win the, win a primary and ultimately the election. I mean, there's, there's, there's no better example that they literally had to write her a script to read off of when she did a phone interview with MSNBC's Chris Hayes. You think Bernie Sanders is reading from a script to do an interview? No, on the phone or otherwise. So this is someone who is not from these emails with someone who possesses a core principle, a core principles that she doesn't have to read from a script or you don't need to mold her policies as she goes. So uh, I'll be reporting more on the, the leaks as they go. Part four came out today and then part five came out. So it seems like they're releasing sometimes two parts a day. So I'll be busy. Follow me on Twitter at Jordan Sheridan. Uh, Emma Viglin, who's my colleague over at TYT Politics, she's also doing videos on this. You could follow her at Emma Viglin. We just passed 84,000 Twitter, uh, excuse me, 84,000 subscribers at TYT Politics. Uh, If you're not subscribed, go over and subscribe. We do videos and content like this all the time. 
I don't cover Trump a lot. I know many of you uh, don't like <laughs> how much Trump is covered. I barely cover him. I don't think I need to duplicate what everybody else in the media is doing. So I've been covering Hillary Clinton a lot and the corruption at, in the Democratic Party. We also do have videos. Uh, my cameraman, Eric Byler, is traveling uh, covering Trump this week. So we have a mix of everything. Go over and subscribe. And uh, you could read my piece uh, if you didn't hear before. Uh, Hillary Clinton and corporate media shamefully stronger together. That's up on my Facebook and Twitter. Thanks, guys.